I see you over there, Mr. Spider. Hiding on the roof. You may escape my sword, but not my bow. <laughs> no, he moved. Don't move. Man, that's a huge spider. I imagine this game must be... If you have arachnophobia, let me know if this game can be a little bit hard to play. Because I would assume it would be. But hello, everyone! So we are out enjoying a zombie night. And what is zombie night, you ask? It is a night where we are going to try to use our precious villagers, who we have four of now, to attract some bait. Um, they're going to be our bait, I mean. To attract some new zombies. So, I got to come over here and I actually... Whoop! Oh, Easy there, noisy crew. I actually ironically have to move uh, some of the torches because we lit the place up so well now that we don't have anyone spawn. So I just want kind of a controlled spawn. Not too out of hand, but I need some zombies to like kick it off. You know what I mean? Like that one. Come here, dude. Come on. Come try to get my villagers. That's right. Come on. See, there we go. Now I'm starting to see some action over here. But the reason we do this is out of the hope that it will attract... It'll attract... Hi, dude. All right, no spiders. Dogs, get that one. It's out of the hope that as these zombies start showing up, it will attract some of the uh, zombie villagers. And then we can pin them in. They're going to be distracted trying to eat my, my villagers. All right, those are just normal ones. And my dogs do so well taking them out, so then I just, like, get the flush. Plus, we do have Meadow Mellow Wax, our amazing priestess, who is able to give us emeralds in exchange for zombie flesh. So that's always exciting. Dogs, do not teleport in front of me whilst mom is trying to kill the zombies, please. Because that's that sucks. And the other good thing is that I have an infinity bow, so this isn't, like, using up any anything except a little bit of the bows. Endurance. Alright, where'd the other guy go? He's just like doing laps around my house. Oh, trying to get in through my front door. Not happening. There we go. Dog food. <laughs> I really need to set up a zombie spawner. But I love zombie nights because what could be a terrifying, scary night actually turns into a pretty productive uh, little run for more zombie villagers. There doesn't seem to be as many spawning lately for some reason. Alright, there's that one. Go away. Go away, creeper. I keep missing you. It's very embarrassing. And you. To the face, sir. To the face. Come on. Hey, come on. Chainmail isn't supposed to be that good anyway. Alright, we'll gather up the zombie flesh. Check to see over here. Nobody over here. I want more kids. <laughs> oh, I need that gunpowder, actually. So it'll be good to take out some creepers. <sighs> but yes, I hope you guys are all having an awesome day. I feel like we're getting so much more done in Time Shot lately. I'm just really hitting a groove. Hello, sheepies! I'm getting ready to like start shearing those green sheep so we can start building custom flowers and things like that. It's going to be awesome. Looks like a creeper went kaboom there. Um, Where are all the mobs? Normally things are like really hard here. Interesting. Hello? Hmm... I mean, our ser or like our client settings don't do anything, right? For this, whoa. Uh, eh. Yeah, see, it's permanently set on hard difficulty. I am just that good at lighting up my base now. ha. <laughs> it's a new skill for me. It's taken many a year to learn. Uh, also, I'm going to fill this hole in just so I don't like wander right into it. But yes, I hope you guys are having a great day. And it is about time that I have resumed getting back to some of your questions. So, without further ado, the ever-popular, what is your favorite plant? I'm still going to say my favorite plant is the hibiscus, mostly because when people ask you what's your favorite something, they might think about, like, drawing it for you or something like that. So, <laughs> I guess it's a little bit biased. I'm like, well, if, you know, you plan on making anything, then of course my favorite plant happens to be the hibiscus. But honestly, I'm really open to any plants. Like, right now, I'm in love with pea plants because they're just so cute. I love the way pea plants look. Um, I think they're really awesome. They have beautiful flowers. I really like the way that pea plants have such lovely, lovely flowers. Um, I mean, if you haven't ever seen a pea plant flower, go look at one. They're really pretty. Also, there's no mobs. I'm just going to replace these. We'll go down to our zombie spawner. And I think maybe we will unleash our zombie spawner for a little while and see what happens. See what we get. 
I imagine I could just bonk the zombies and be like, dogs, get them. All right, let's see. Let's just go downstairs then. Oh, there's somebody with a bow. Leave my sheep alone. Cattle rustler. Cattle rustle and skeleton. But yeah, so like, uh, also watermelon. Watermelon is definitely a favorite plant right now because watermelon would be absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's an angry spider. No, bad spider. Thank you for the string. Might need that. Oh, it's a Zom Zom. Why couldn't you show up last night? And bring like your friends. Like I'm actually okay with that now. I'm like, it's fine. Bring your friends. Come forth, zombies. I don't mind. I've got an infinity bow on me. I need your flesh to feed my dogs and also to give to Mellow Meadow Wax. Um, yes. Yes. So I'm trying to think. Definitely watermelon. Peonies are beautiful. If you guys haven't ever seen peonies, they are these amazing... I'll try to like stick some pictures of peonies uh, in right about now so that if I remember <laughs> so that you guys can see what they look like. But peonies are stunning are really stunning and they're just so beautiful with uh, the way their petals unfurl and they have a very unique uh, like relationship with ants actually. The peony flowers that I'm familiar at least uh, with at least need ants to help them uh, blossom basically. They cannot blossom without the ants helping them out by opening up the, the buds or they can't blossom as effectively. And so what they do to encourage the ants to help them open their buds is they excrete a very sweet liquid. And from that uh, liquid, then the ants will come and be attracted and they'll go, oh, this is yummy. And they'll just keep collecting it and they'll keep collecting it. And in the end, come on, dogs down. In the end, the ants end up collecting all this liquid and in exchange the peony plants then have their pollinator come by and like open up open up what they do. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to take these down. I'll take down the interior ones too. This is probably dark enough now. Whoa, Lordy. Dark enough. Dark enough. Wow, it really turned into kind of like a dog pit now. Good job, puppies. Mom didn't think this through because I don't know how to reach that now. I've got to reevaluate my choices in life. Maybe make a gate. This is, like, not even worthy of being called, like, a grinder. It's not. <laughs> it's just me beginning to open it up. Because the thing is, I don't know if I want a grinder if I can't get the villager zombies out. How'd you go, dude? And my dogs are quite happy. Tate's just watching to, like, come along and help out. All right, well, maybe if I take the... Can I reach... Oh, sweet. If I just walk along the bottom, then it'll work. So this is, like, the most low-tech silly grinder <laughs> not worthy of being called a grinder don't think it's a grinder guys it's, it's embarrassing I'm probably gonna get other things spawning back here now because I've made it too dark in the corners all right let's just keep going along the edge up oh, here's another guy Boink. but I want to be able to reach him and like send him into a new area in fact I should build that like the exit chamber where I could send him come here Come here, zombie flesh. I guess I'm gonna have to line it with like gates so I can open it. I don't mind if it's slow. I'm not trying to use it for XP at this point, at least. For now, I'm just gonna like make something casual. All right. Oh my gosh, I have so much stuff. What am I gonna do with all of it? Uh, string. You can go in here, here. There you go, seeds. An iron sword. I guess I'll finish using this against the zombies. Oh, I have a new one. Oh, guys, hi! Good to see you. Neither of you happen to be the variety of zombie that I, I need here. So I'm going to have my dogs help me out. That's actually hilarious. I can just, like, make a pit. My dogs will <laughs> take care of it. And I can just go get the experience and the rotten flesh no problem later. Wow. All right, let's see. Would this make a gate? Oh, it's gates! Yes! That's what I need in life right now whole bunch of these gates so I can just like reach in, grab the flesh and the experience. Oh, jeez, poet's horse. You scared the bedoodles out of me. All right, let's see what happens if I leave just these two up. If that makes it too light or if the, the spawning's still okay. All right, so let's see. And then I'm going to come down here and 
There we go. Got that. Hi, puppies. Mom still needs you to help out with uh, this very odd little contraption we've built here. Come here, zombie flesh. All right, so gotta, gotta go whack this zombie in the face. All right, kids. Yep, that one too, please. My dogs are so cool. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> I need to stop apologizing. My friends are so good. They always get all over me for how much I apologize. They're like, Siri, stop it. And I do need to stop. Never apologize for being yourself, kids. And and many, many adults who I'm honored to share some some time and hang out time with. But yeah, um, that's another one of the answers. And remember guys, you can leave like lots and lots of questions in the comments section and I will get to them as soon as I can. Which sometimes I have other things to talk about for a while and I apologize when it gets ramped. No, 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 what did I just say? Stop apologizing. There we go. There we go. Look at this. Somehow this is actually kind of cool. Hey, you. Right on the forehead. Actually, I guess I don't need to make it such a tall, such a tall contraption, do I? <laughs> now that I realize it, I'm like, wait, it doesn't need to be such a huge, like, gate. That's just kind of unnecessary. I don't know, it looks cool. And hopefully it'll help me when it comes time to, like, really start getting these guys going, but I wonder what the spawn rate is. I'm gonna, see, this is what's so cool about trying new things, is you start going, I wonder how this works, I wonder how that works. And then you wanna start, like, experimenting, you wanna start learning the statistics. I've never cared about things like the statistics and stuff like that before. All right, noted. I'm gonna have to make, like, a little hole, and then through the hole I can go boink, because I can't reach through the gate and do that. So maybe I should just remove, like, the lines? Hmm. Because the zombies aren't going to get me over the fence. And we're keeping this very low-tech, low-key. I'm using dogs as my grinder. <laughs> I guess that's okay. Alright, let's try this method out. They're not going to climb out and escape on me. Hi, baby! This way he's a lot easier to reach. And my dogs can actually attack him by jumping slightly over the fence, too. So there we go. That's nice. And the Meanwhile Poet's horse is just wandering around. That is amazing. I'm going to leave the second ones up top, though, because they look kind of cool. I kind of want to exchange them out for, like, mossy cobblestone and cobblestone now. For the lowest tech. The thing is, this is supposed to be a zombie villager birthing machine. More than, like, a grinder. So I'm fine with this. How much, like, oh, not bad. It doesn't do bad on rotten flesh. Let's see. How dark do I need to keep it? Like, is this one making it too like? <gasps> See, and I could just hear people going, oh, Siri, it doesn't work that fast. You can't make a zombie villager like that quickly uh, in Minecraft with the, the spawners. And I turn around and what do we see? But a little zombie villager waiting for me. All right, so what we're gonna do. All right, watch out, Zozo. We've gotta make a little area where we can be like, hey, you. Hey, you, come get me. All right, sit, Lily. I'm going to whack the other guy in the face, though. One. And then I need the other one. They aren't going to attack the one I didn't hit, thankfully. Good dogs. Hey, you. Yeah, you. All right, watch out, Lily. Then I can open the door. Be like, hey. Hey, come this way. Come get me. Oi, you jerk. That's right, come on. Oh. <gasps> Good zombie! And now I can hit this one. Eh. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Alright, then we'll come down and whack this one. Do I have the potion of... I still have a potion of weakness and an apple on me right now. This is like the best ever. I get my little... I get my little villager! Yay! Alright, so we'll smack him with the potion of weakness. Give him the apple. And then we can light up the area for a minute, um, since I have my, my goal, which is a new babe. And then I'll have to, like, put it in a protective area. Once it's a villager, I don't think it'll despawn on its own, so we just have to stay in the area till it, it finishes. Alright, well that makes me so happy! But yes, again, rambling! That's what happens when you start new projects, sometimes you just get distracted. Alright, hang on, who's hurt? We have some zombie flesh! There you go, Tate. Oh, that didn't help Tate. I was hoping it would help Tate. 
All right, you can stand up, Lily. Yeah, there you go. And then I know, baby. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> Tay and Lily just had a puppy. Okay, that wasn't planned. But yeah, so let me think. Um, other questions. The favorite plant is always like a huge one. And then someone asked a really cool question about coral bleaching. What is my opinion on coral bleaching? And I do, I don't know much about coral bleaching at all. The basic gist I know about coral bleaching basically says that, oh, are you hungry? Basically says that like the corals in the wild are dying off due to the toxicity or due to um, something about the ocean, like too exposed to the sun perhaps. And coral, just so you guys know, is not a plant. Coral is actually like a community of animals. Isn't that amazing? I really think, like, that's one of the coolest facts to me is that coral can be, it, it is like a community of creatures. What you see in the hardened coral is the result of years and years and years of growth from other groups. Oh, I can't believe we got a zombie villager, like, first, first day I'm, like, poking at this thing. And that I had the curing things on me, because it hit me. I need to keep name tags down here if I want this to work, because I need to name the villagers, or else they'll despawn when we go. Because they're zombies. Hey, Zombombi. This is kind of fun letting the dogs take care of it, too. Laziest. It's, again, it's not an XP grinder. This is just my way of, like, getting baby villagers. Oh, there's another Zombombi. There you go, buddy. Uh, but yeah, I want to look up more about coral bleaching. And that actually ties in to what Mandy has asked me, which is how long do I think I'll be doing the YouTube thing? The YouTube thing is still so new to me. I have told this story so many times, but many of you new people don't know about it. I had no idea what YouTubing was when I started making videos. In fact, I didn't know that it was a big thing, a big deal. I didn't know that it was this entire own industry. I didn't know you could make money off of YouTube videos through the advertisements that show. I just thought it was a great way to tell sim stories because of Jessa. Jessa uh, plays, I think, oh, Jessa, just Jessa, there we go, uh, is who I watched play my very first Let's Play, and it was a Sims 2 Let's Play, and I thought it was just the easiest, best way to very quickly and in a very fun manner, oh, he's wearing a hat, he has a potato hat on. I thought it was just like, oh, we're done, we're done. A fun way to share Sims 2, but I have a new baby. Wow, look at you. You like to trade coal? Oh, that's so cool, dude. Hang on. Oh my gosh, this guy dropped iron. That was really cool. How are you, sweetheart? Let me get you out of the way of these nasty zombies. Because I don't want you to get hurt. Also, I have no idea what we're going to do with them. I'm going to make a new holding pen for villagers right here. And then I guess eventually I'm just gonna have to like extract him. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's just you you I wasn't ready. I wasn't a prepared mother So I guess then I'll make this pen uh, for finished finished uh, Villagers there we go And then put that there. All right, baby. I'm sorry. You've got to stay in here for a little bit. Okay Don't despawn on me. I don't think villagers do despawn uh, thankfully but I'm very excited, because we have a new baby. <laughs> and that's kind of my thing, collecting villagers. All right, I'm going to gather these up. I'm just going to kind of watch this while we sort of peck out. This is kind of my my underground base, I guess you could consider, because I have so many spawners. So really, I guess I should make it fancier, like put gardens in the walls and everything. So I'll work on that. That's why I'm, I'm like, huh, maybe we should actually spend some time Organizing it, decorating it, hollowing it out a bit more. Just maybe. Just maybe. But yeah, Mandy asked how long she think uh, how long do I think I'll be making Let's Plays and doing being a YouTuber? And that's kind of a tricky question because in so many ways this is a dream job. In so many ways, this is beyond anything I ever imagined. I really sincerely never thought that this was a career path. There's lots and lots of people who get into this and they're like, they know about Let's Play and they know what they want to do and they know they want to do this 
And I didn't know about those things when I started making videos. Like I said, I just thought it was a cool way to share Sims 2 legacies. And that's why I, my URL, if you look, is called Siri Sims. It's because I started playing with Sims. And for months, for five months, when I put out my first videos, I thought Jessa was the only person on all of YouTube that made Let's Plays. I really did, because <laughs> I just didn't know about the industry. I didn't know about it as a whole, a whole new cultural movement, really. And now I know it's much bigger than that, and I'm so happy to be part of it. And it is kind of scary that I've thrown my hat deep into the ring and gone, okay, I'm going to try to make a real career out of this. But at the same time, everything is scary that way. Every time you try to make a career change or a choice, it's scary that way. And there's a lot of reasons that I've made this choice and a big part of that is because it, it just was it was the right thing for me I feel okay where's the oh trying to get at my, my kidlet huh well that's kind of useful what how's Tate getting hurt okay I'm closing the gate then I don't know how Tate got hurt from that sorry booby alright guys it's like a dog pit <laughs> oh my gosh. But, you know, it to me it always, I struggle to put my mouth around the words of saying, yeah, like, yeah, this is my job because it just seems so surreal and also because it's very scary. It's your job as long as you manage to make money from YouTube. It's your job as long as people keep watching. It's your job as long as, like, YouTube keeps paying ad revenue to you. Um, and that's pretty spooky when I have a family to take care of. Uh, I know a lot of YouTubers actually have children. And I have my parents, I don't have kids, but my parents are both disabled and need a lot of time, um, need a lot of attention. You know what I mean? In, in terms of they, they're functioning adults on their own, but it is always going to be very helpful to them if I happen to have like a hundred dollars laying around, which Honestly, I don't, but I tell them I do so that I can give it to them. <laughs> and so I feel a deep sense of responsibility towards my parents and my family, and I don't like to um, ever risk their well-being. But the thing is, I had my CNA, which is a nursing-type license. It's a nurse assistant license. I had my CNA, and I was training as a nurse, and I was finding people who had been working in the field for like ever and they couldn't find a job. I was meeting people who were going back to school because they had two bachelor's degrees and they were earning less than I was on commission and I was making almost nothing on commission at a, a store, <laughs> at a pet store. And it hit me like there is no secure job anymore. And I think that's something a lot of people my age, in your mid to late 20s, talk about a lot now because you feel so confused. You feel like maybe you're just doing life wrong because you're not finding all the mythical jobs you were supposed to when you grew up. And it turns out, no, they're just not there anymore. Um, and the, the industries are all changing so quickly. Like, what, what is a job is kind of a relevant question. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Uh-uh. Rude. Rudy McRude, rude. And my dogs are like, Mom, no! Helplessly watching from the background. <gasps> is my villager being attacked? Oh my gosh, did my villager just get killed? My villager just got turned back into a zombie villager. No! Okay, I guess the spawn is a little bit bigger than I thought. Um, whoops a doops Whoops, a doops. That's so ironic that he turned back into a villager. I just cured you, my love. I'm afraid I, I, I won't be able to do it again before you transform. Oh, I feel so bad. What a twist in the tail. What a twist in the tail indeed. Um, I should probably make my catch zone bigger then. That's what that tells me. I'm going to widen my catch zone. Oh, I hear little zombie now. Oh, man, I can't believe that. All right, well, what am I going to do about this, huh? Huh, buddy? What am I going to do for you? Come here, Kidlet. Good dog. It's actually kind of fun to do it this way. <laughs> 
So to me, there are no secure things. There's a lot of variabilities in YouTube, though, and it's very scary because how many people view your episodes really has a direct impact on how much your family gets to eat the next month. Um, especially when you're a smaller YouTuber like I am, it's very scary to put your hopes, your dreams, your future in anything's hands. But I've worked for big companies. I've worked for the people who weren't supposed to go under. I've worked for the places where like, you're supposed to be able to go, oh, it's okay, I have a job here, and that means I have a secure future. And guess what? Those futures vanished because the job wouldn't give you enough hours. They didn't want you to have like, too many benefits, so they would just stop, stop like, doing anything, and you would get less and less hours, and you got more and more trouble as a result. All right, let's see. I'm not sure what to do about this, this zombie villager. I think he's going to despawn by the time we come back, so I guess I'm just going to have to focus on getting name tags. I'm sorry, Bubby. I really didn't mean for you to turn back into a zombie. Uh, I guess we'll make like a safe house for them so that there's not an open top like this and it'll be further away so that this next time like I won't have any any chance of the zombies spawning in there. I feel so bad for him. I guess I guess I'll like try to build a safe house over here. Um, what do you think poet's horse? Maybe. Sorry, Bubby. Uh, but yeah, like, it, it's always scary to put your future in any career path because that career path is never guaranteed. My dad worked at a great job when we were growing up. Um, he had a fantastic job, actually, working for a pipeline company. And then he had a heart attack, and that pipeline company fired him because they had a policy where if anyone died, then you got a like a million dollar life insurance payout automatically. The way that they got around ever having to pay out was by immediately firing you as soon as you had any health issues. And there's no protection from stuff like that, even though they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, there's legal protection. There's not, not realistically. So it's really tricky because I, I do, oh, an Enderman took my block here, huh? I do want to continue on with my biology degree. That's a huge goal. And the thing is, even though YouTubing is a unconventional job choice, I feel like I'm doing so much good through it. I was going into nursing because I wanted to help people. And I thought even if I was just a CNA earning like $7 an hour for backbreaking work and with people's well-being really in my hands, it would be worth it if I could help people. And when I got into that industry, I realized that I wasn't able to help people because of, of money. Because the money was the bottom line. Because we're not going to give this elderly patient the extra cookie she wants, be even though she's fine for her weight range and she doesn't have any, any eating restrictions, because you know it, it's not part of her, her diet plan and it would cost us money to give her this cookie. And that's just like a mild example. Then there were other times where I was in, like doing my training, my like at nursing home training, and I will never forget sitting down and I was very timid and I was new and I, I was really confused because my trainer, she didn't, like, our company wasn't affiliated with that nursing home beyond, like, bringing our students there for practical hands-on training. And so we were told specifically, if you see a problem, you can come and tell us, but don't you dare bring it up in front of the CNAs in question, or else then the company won't let us bring our trainees here and we'll have nowhere to take you for practical training. Well, we're sitting there at, at uh, the table where people needed assistance for eating. And these are often people who are pretty far gone. They can't really vocalize. They can't really communicate on any level whatsoever anymore. And the, the CNAs just sat down and they kind of broke the food up and kind of made vague attempts at feeding, but they were mostly talking about, like they were sitting together and like flipping through their phones and talking about, um, like the latest soap operas and then one of the CNAs leaned in uh, and rolled her eyes and she was like oh, like so and so who was her responsibility her patient for the for the duration of the lunch uh, had totally basically messed their pants and apparently it had happened like before lunch and she's just like confidentially rolling her eyes to the other CNA and she's like oh, I just I couldn't be bothered to like have to go and change her and then we'd be late to lunch and I get in so much trouble for that and so this poor woman who's like in her mid-90s, not able to communicate whatsoever, and just is staring into space, and occasionally she'd kind of gnaw at the spoon of porridge stuff that they would poke at her mouth. 
like, was sitting there completely filthy, and you couldn't tell because they had a blanket over her, her wheelchair, like, over her knees in her wheelchair, and just sitting there. And this was the level of care I often saw. It was, uh, be quiet, don't complain, elderly person, because we're on a schedule. Even the nice people would have to rush in and... You know, you would be told in class, you, your your goal is empathy, your goal is kindness, your goal is to, to help people, and that's what I was there for. And then you get into the practical world of it, and there's none of that care, because it's it, everything is so timed. You just don't have time, and you want to believe that you'll have time, but even when it was my turn to like try to do stuff, like the best I could do was a really sad smile as I rushed back and forth, because they give you an entire floor of 60, 70, 80 people and two people to get all of those 60, 70, 80 people to the bathroom. And often you have to like do everything for them in the bathroom, carry them to the bathroom with your, your gate belt. You have to like help them onto it. You have to help them clean up. You have to help them put their clothes back on. You have to help them wash their hands. You have to wash your hands. You have to wash your hands like eight times in this entire process for safety issues. And so I wasn't able to help people, and I watched as people were being ignored and abused, and there was nothing that I could do about it. And it broke my heart, and I knew I couldn't continue going into nursing when this was the result. And it was really, it was really sad. So then, fast forward to now, I get letters from adults, from children, from people who I have never met telling me how much our adventures and our time together have taken away their pain, have given them hope for life, have helped their depression ease, have helped them stop self-harming, how my kindness and just my enthusiasm for pixel animals and for, for sharing my passion of the world my heart with you guys has changed so many lives and it brightened so many days. I guess in the end I realize that even if this is not a very secure job, even if there's so many risks involved, even if it, it is scary some days to go, would this be, would my time be better spent trying to build up credit with some company that would keep me on and give me benefits and give me like wage increases and thus protect my family more? Even though sometimes I wonder about that, even though I think those jobs are honestly more of a myth now than reality in most fields, like, I don't think I could ever turn my back on, on being able to help people in this way. It, somehow, the 20-30 minutes that I'm able to spend sitting down and talking into a microphone translates into peace and happiness and joy for other people. And it's surreal and weird and doesn't make sense to me some days and yet I understand it entirely because the same thing happens for me. The same thing happens when I listen to vlogs and let's plays and actually the vlogs and the let's plays, Jess's let's plays, the other let's plays I found, the, um, the, the Blackrock series from Yogg's Castorithian and Zoe, those pulled me out of an immense depression and from there I was able to really start standing up on my own two feet and just start enjoying life more just because I had amazing stories and like, you know, when you're listening to a YouTube video, it feels like a very personal experience. It feels like you have your friend there with you. You like to learn the inside jokes. You like the person. If you spend time with someone who makes the videos like every day, you feel like you have a friend to turn to and it's so relaxing because it's not a friend you have to worry about like really talking to it's not a friend you really have to worry about like if they can meet with you or not they're always there for you at the click of a button and it's a really 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 unique experience and new i don't think there's anything to compare it to in human history beforehand so I love it. I love it. It's weird. It's new. It's different. It's changing my life. It's changing other people's lives. Um, it's given me, I mean, the unimaginable possibility in my hands to take care of my family by just being true to my own passion and, and sense of justice and kindness and empathy 
And I'm starting to do more things like vlog on the vlog channel of just going on hikes. And it's amazing the effect that just sharing that bit of the natural world has on people. And it's amazing how the act of sharing it with you tremendously changes my life. I am so excited, even more than I was before, to go on hikes and to turn over every stump, to like search under every tree. Watch out, pup pups and to look for something because now I want to find something to share with you. I have a sense of community even though I spend the majority of every single day alone beyond saying hello and spending a little time with darling. Like I, I spend every single day physically almost entirely alone beyond my, my birds and that's not a good thing. I need to find my tribe. I don't have a tribe yet. I don't have a group yet because I've had to move so much. So I'm really looking forward to like taking hula lessons in our new town. I'm really looking forward to going to the farmer's market on a weekly basis, if just to strike up conversations with people. I'm really looking forward to volunteering at one of the, the parks there and cleaning the trails and vlogging that and sharing that experience not only with you guys, but also sharing that experience with other people who love parks. I mean, the vo other volunteers there. But I am so excited to go out and strive to find more in life, to learn more about life because I get to share it with you guys. And I can't imagine anything more fulfilling than that. So how long will I be Let's Playing? I love telling the stories. I love the opportunity to take care of my family in this way. I think I will continue Let's Playing for as long as, as it's, oh, I'm sorry, Zozo, for as long as it is feasible. The time that it will not be feasible is when it no longer helps me take care of my family to the point where I have to put all of my resources, not just a few hours and still have some hours to let's play, but to the point where I have to put 100% of my energy into a different area. That's the only time I can think that it would not be feasible for me to continue let's playing. I've been doing it for about two years now, um, like seriously. and. Like I said, it's changed my life, so you can expect lots more. If the question is asked because it's like, oh, when do I need to worry about Siri stopping? Is she going to stop when she goes back to university? I plan on paying for my university and my rent <laughs> with my Let's Playing, so don't worry. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop for a long, long time. Um, and I've rambled for forever now, so I'm, I'll stop rambling for now, but I'm going to be there for you the next day and the next day and the next day, so don't worry. I am honored to share this journey with you guys, and I'm so honored and touched that it helps me take care of my family through your guys' donations, through your guys just spending time with me. You literally, think about how beautiful that is in a way. Some people are like, ew, advertisements, ew, like, how could you make money off your craft? But think about how beautiful it is that we're able to spend time together having fun and adventuring. And somehow there's this like little link, this little bridge through advertising that makes it possible for me to take care of my beloved family just because we're having a great time adventuring together. I think that's amazing. Uh, so I'll, the bottom line, I will keep making Let's Plays as long as it's feasible for me to do so, as long as it'll help me take care of my family and myself. And like, I'm always going to have that passion in my heart to do my best to shout from the rooftops about the natural world and its wonders. So <laughs> one way or another, I've learned that I develop, derive more true joy from speaking up about those kinds of things than from staying quiet. <laughs> so if, it, if not Let's Plays, I would find some way, even if it was just teaching people in person, which would be a much smaller audience than the thousands of people we get to talk to. Um, to teach you guys, to teach the world about how amazing our, our shared planet is. Never forget, no matter which country you're in right now, that we're all sharing this planet together. Even if that's the most surreal feeling, even if it's really hard to wrap our minds around. It's true. It's true. And I don't see any more kids, so drat. We're going to have to figure out how to set up that catch range so that I can move my, my cured villagers into a safe house. And then upstairs, I wonder if we could like make a protected tram, like in a, like a protected train where I can push the villager into a little tram 
And then they can, like, I can turn on a button and it'll shoot them up over to, like, a train station up here where they can be safe and sound hiding inside. Like, and there's, like, a tube that goes the whole way so they're protected from all sides. And they can just sit there until I can come for them. That sounds adorable. But we'll work on that more next time and I will see you guys then. Please, please, please feel free to ask all sorts of questions, science related, um, my opinions on things, just anything in the comments below because it's part of what makes us be able to share the experience together, the adventure together. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye!